calendar. You are a mute. I can't hear you if you're out there, Hunter. But we'll get started in a few minutes. We usually have two or three other people uh, show up for this uh, class. Mind if I finish my breakfast of a piece of string cheese? Can you hear me, Hunter? Yes, I can. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay. What character is that anyway? I can't quite see what that is. Oh, it's just a random piece of artwork. I never bothered changing for my Google profile. <laughs> Pretty cool, pretty cool. I think the teachers all should do something like that. Okay, you're gonna remain hidden behind the uh, dark screen today. Hunter, you're gonna show your face. I'm currently in a car at the moment, so uh, yeah. Oh, well, that, you know, that, yeah. uh, that's no problem. Just, just watch me while you're driving. Okay. All right, we'll give you a driving lesson, I guess we call it, huh? Where, where are you driving right now? You're, you're, you're the one up in Washington, right? Uh, yes, I am. Bellevue. Yeah. That's right. We talked about Bellevue Hospital in New York. I'm uh, currently heading back to, uh, heading back home. I just got my second vaccine shot. You're heading back where? I'm uh, heading back home. Oh, okay. All right, Hunter, we'll give it another couple of minutes here. Was it just not quite 10? Yeah, Anthony should be joining us and Rodrigo and Caitlin, perhaps. But, uh, yeah, let me, I have another, I'm in my office now, by the way, so it's nice to be on campus, although we're not really open yet, but I'm vaccinated. And I'm allowed to come in here as long as I don't come into contact with other humans. Hold on here. Okay, this is my late start class, right? With you, yeah. So hold on. I just want to look at something. This is nice having two big screens in front of me if I need them. Come here, you. Looks like you have a lot of catching up to do, huh, Hunter? Yeah, a bit. Holy cow. Well, there's still plenty of time. Catch up on, you know, the assignments you haven't done. You Right now, it looks like you're not going to pass the class, right? If you look online, I'm looking at like 30, am I reading that correctly? 39%, but, but much of that can be made up. Much of that can be made up here. Maybe we can talk about that. Crazy up here. What's that? Yeah, it's just been a bit crazy up here. Oh, I can, I can imagine. Yeah, it looks like you haven't done, well, let's see, quiz, you did the quizzes okay. I'm trying to see why you would have such a, a low score. I bet it's not doing home. No, you. Yeah, it looks like. One thing I can really suggest that you take a shot at com complete all the summaries, Hunter. Looks like you, you, you cut off after chapter seven. Because that's low hanging fruit. Now that'll, that'll help bring you up there. I can tell you right now, I'm not going to fail anybody. <laughs> but I would like to see you get a better mark than, uh, than you know, just passing.
Okay. I right, just wait a few more minutes here. If these guys don't show up today, that's going to be annoying because they've been here every time. Okay. Time is running out. Are you a, you're you're not a sports fan, right, uh, Hunter? I play sports. Watching them is a bit harder for me because I yeah. What, what, what sports did you play? Uh, rugby and football. Rugby, rugby and football. Wow, wow. What what kind of uh, player were you with football? A lineman, a running back, or what? Uh, I was a O lineman, center. Okay. The most important player in the game. I'll tell you something funny. Not funny to me. It's funny because it's my grand my grandson, my my sister's grandson. She put him into a, a football league already at the age of four. Can you believe that? And um, it's in Northeast Pennsylvania where so many great, great players come from. So it's an avid area. And they, they made him the center for two reasons. He likes to do it for some reason. And he's the only kid who can remember the snap count. And now he just loves to play football. So we'll see what happens to him as he gets older. I guess the test is when he gets knocked around a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, because center is just so much fun getting knocked around in. Yes, yes. Well, I wish him the best of luck. <laughs> oh, thank you. Is a uh, great uncle here. Bob played a lot of baseball in college and high school. <laughs> we didn't have a football team. <laughs> All right. By the way, my college football team was number one in the country in 1970. Isn't that amazing? King's College, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, in our division. Okay, I'm going to start going here, okay? You ready, Hunter? Yep. All right. So you're going to catch up on those summaries and get, you know, catch up on all the stuff you're missing. I know it's tough. But I do want you to go into 2.30 with a good understanding of, you know, the basics here. The debits and credits and the financial statements. Okay. All right. In chapter 13, we got into um, perpetual type system. Up until now, Hunter, purchases were what we debit when we buy something. Up until now, Hunter, when we purchase something, we debit just that account. Purchases and we credit the accounts payable or whatever. Purchases is a cost. And under the periodic system, which is what we were using up until now, we only could record the sale at the point of sales. In other words, somebody comes into us, gives us a check, we debited cash and we credited sale. And then we handed the person the merchandise and that was the end. We never recorded the reduction of the inventory as things were sold. Now, under the system we're, we're, we're looking at here in chapters 13, 14, and 15, we're going to record the cost of goods sold on top of that. We're going to say to ourselves, well, on a perpetual system, we know every second of the day how much exactly we have on hand and exactly what our cost of goods sold is at this point in time. Therefore, we may not have to take a physical inventory at the end of the month. So we're going to be looking at a four-line journal entry when we sell something to debit cost the goods sold and credit the inventory. So what they're showing us here, Hunter, and everybody out there, good morning to all my class, who I know will be running to look at this thing later on. They're going to give us a new adjusting entry. We had adjusting entries earlier for like prepaid insurance. We bought an insurance policy for next year. We debited an asset called prepaid expenses, prepaid insurance. And then as the year went on, the policy lapsed and lapsed and we recorded the appropriate monthly expense. Depreciation expense was another adjusting entry. We debit depreciation expense, credit the contra, asset accumulated depreciation. And we accrued expenses like wages, debit salaries, ex wages expense perhaps, credit, accrued wage is payable. Now, under the perpetual system here, we're gonna look at an adjustment 
that's a little bit different. Under the, what do they got here? For purchase and merchant. Yeah, what they're doing, they're just reviewing the um, periodic method, Hunter. You notice the purchase, they debited purchases and they credited cash or accounts uh, payable. And when they sold something, they debited cash and credited sales. That's all you do with the periodic. So now we're getting into the perpetual system. And there's a few differences that we need to understand. But the periodic, which we've already been learning, is much harder than the perpetual. And so let's take a look here. We're going to take a look at a worksheet now, um, Hunter. And it's going to be a, a 10 column worksheet. Um, 11, I guess, if you count the 12, I guess, if you count the um, headers on, on the first two columns. So this worksheet is um, really just a piece of scrap paper. It's just used to prepare year end adjustments. It's a way to organize the data. And it's going to include an adjustment for the merchandise inventory at the end of the accounting period. And it's used to prepare the financial statements. Oh, hi, Rod. How you doing? Good. Um, good morning. Good. I, it was, was it okay? I emailed some stuff to you, uh, Rod, rather than coming up today. Is that okay through the pipeline? Oh, that's fine. I'll take a look at it. Okay. That's okay. great. Yeah. We're, yeah. We are just, I was just getting started with Hunter, so I'll, I'll just back up here. We're still, we're, we're still into the perpetual system here. This was the old Rod and um, Hunter. One more time, I'll look at it. Purchase, debit purchases, credit cash. Debit accounts receivable, um, perhaps credit accounts receivable, debit cash, okay? This is the simple world of the periodic. Now here's where we were when you came in, um, Rod. We're gonna talk about a, a worksheet. It's a lengthy worksheet, not a hard worksheet, but it really does organize things and it is used by just about every company imaginable. Um, even if you have a computer system, you may probably need to do this in Excel for, cer for certain reasons, okay? And eventually this worksheet will enable us to prepare the financial statements. Now here's the new entry. This one you've not seen before. Under the perpetual system, well, they're called periodic, I guess it doesn't make any difference. Um, but we have a, a situation where Andy's Auto Parts has a beginning merchandise inventory of 25000 At the end of the accounting period, a physical inventory was taken of the merchandise, and that determined that we had 27000 at the end of the year. Well, all that means is that purchases exceeded sales. Um, this slide is wrong, I believe. That should say perpetual system on top. That's what we're talking about here. Because, because in the world of the periodic, we don't have a merchandise inventory account. It's purchases. So here we are. All year long now, we've been debiting merchandise inventory rather than purchases. Our new entry is going to be something like this. Out with the old, in with the new. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Merchandise inventory is not changed during the accounting period. Okay, so they're back in the periodic. So I guess that was right. The cost of merchandise is not recorded under the periodic until the end of the year. So after a year of purchasing and selling merchandise, the merchandise inventory balance is no longer accurate. I would hope not. Under a periodic system, the merchandise inventory account is only correct twice a year or even, yeah, twice a year, once at the beginning and once at the very end. So let's see what we're talking about here. Out with the old, in with the new. Out with the old, in with the new. You know that expression. The beginning inventory is going to be credited by getting, by crediting merchandise inventory. We're gonna get rid of that beginning inventory. Out with the old. We're going to debit income summary because this amount is used to come up with the cost of goods sold. So we want to put it into the income summary. Out with the old. That's a credit to the inventory, debit to income summary. In with the new. In with the new. The inventory is now $27,000. we are going to debit the inventory for $27,000 and 
uh, credit the um, in, uh, income summary, okay? And again, income summary is credited. We're using this account because as we go through the worksheet, you guys are gonna see we have to bring that debit and credit in the income summary over to the income statement because we need it for the cost of goods sold calculation. Huh? Note that the debit and credit adjustments made the income summary are extended into the adjusted trial balance. It's done because the individual amounts are needed to calculate the cost of goods sold on the income statement. And remember our very simple template, beginning inventory plus purchases gives you goods available for sale. You can't sell any more than that. At the end of the month, you count the inventory and what's not there, voila, that's your cost of goods sold. And then step three and five in a merchandise will return. Okay. Under a perpetual system, under the perpetual system, the return merchandise is will be captured. Let me look at this here real quick. Steps three, five, in a merchandise system, it's likely the customers will return. This entry is made. Okay. Well, take a look at this. This is no different. And I'm sorry for stumbling for a second. This is no different from what we learned in chapter um, 10. Chapter 10, sales returns and allowances. Regardless of the system, perpetual periodic, this is the same. Adjustment for merchandise inventory. Now you see where it says Andy's, Andy estimates customers. Don't worry about these problems with estimating returns or estimating uh, write-offs. We're not gonna go over that for, for, for some very good reasons that I could uh, explain to you if you like. So we're skipping that business about the estimated uh, re, uh, refunds. That will not be on the test. And I will review the test as I always do, question by question, making sure there were no such questions on the test. And if there were, you get them automatically right. Huh? In steps four and five, we're gonna come up with the estimated inventory. And this is a lot of talking for something that's really quite simple. We're not doing these estimated. As soon as the estimated, we ain't doing it, okay? So now let me make this a little bit bigger if I can. Zoom, it's zooming. Okay. Let's take a careful look at this, okay? At the end of the month, at the end of the month on December 31st, we run a trial balance. And this is obviously just a partial trial balance. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna prepare our inventory adjusting entries. So let's see what we're talking about, okay? Merchandise inventory. Remember, it was $23,000 on our financial statements, if you will, at the end of the prior year. Now we went out there and we counted or our perpetual system is telling us it's $27,000. How do we adjust that 4,000? Well, we're not gonna just credit this for 4,000 or, or, or rather debit inventory for 4,000. We could, I guess, and get the right answers across, but it would really make it difficult without having the beginning and ending inventory available. So that's why we do it in two steps. Step one, out with the old, out with the old. Credit, inventory, 23,000, debit, income summary, 23. In with the new. Here's our adjusting entry now. Here's our adjusting entry. We debit the second part of the adjusting entry. We debit the inventory, and now we credit income summary. So you can see by that, we're left with the proper balance. Beginning 20,000, 23,000, we credited 23,000, out with the old, we're down to zero. We go in with the new 27,000. I'm not worried about these estimated things, okay? So that's, your, that's the start of your worksheet. And now they're gonna take us through a few um, adjustments that we pretty much should already know. But I'm glad, I think it's a good little review. Unearned revenue, unearned revenue. 
I sent in my thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to the LA Rams and the LA Chargers for my season tickets on the 50 yard line. They got my money in the mail today for the upcoming season. That's not income to them. That does not go on their income statement. They have not made one set in profit from the money I gave them. In fact, they incurred a liability because they debited cash and they credited unearned ticket revenue or unearned football games. Not until the Rams kick off the season do they start recognizing this income, okay? They play an eight game, I guess next year they're playing a nine game schedule. They raise the schedule to 18 games, which is nuts. But every time they play a football game, one ninth of this liability is gonna go away. So here we go. Here's a county playhouse, Brown County, play, I almost said Bucks County Playhouse, which is a beautiful theater in um, Southeast New Jersey on the Philadelphia border. I used to go there once in a while. Brown County Playhouse sells season tickets and the tickets are 10 bucks a play, five plays a season. They sell the place out, a thousand seats. That's $50,000 this theater received at the box office before anybody stepped on stage to uh, do some hammy acting, right? Debit cash, credit, unearned revenue. In this case, unearned ticket revenue, that is your liability account. And what happened? Well, after that, following production of the third show, it was time to do the financial statements. So let's figure it out. Three shows <laughs> times 1,000 tickets, that's 3,000 times 10. $30,000, look at that adjusting entry. We debit the liability account, <coughs> excuse me, called unearned ticket revenue, and we credit the revenue. And they're just showing you it here. Take a peek, please. Unearned revenue is a liability. The ticket revenue is the revenue. And you can see they had zero balance and then they sold the $50,000 tickets in advance, performed $30,000 worth of plays and left them with a balance of $20,000. Now here, uh, I'm assuming you can read, read this. I'm not gonna blow it up unless you ask me to, but they're just showing you kind of some of the newer accounts that we're working with here. Merchandise inventory. We're seeing this really only for the second time after the prior chapter. Don't worry about the estimated returns or the customer returns payable. That's a bunch of baloney. We're not gonna worry about that. Unearned revenue, unearned subscription revenues. Well, we know sales and sales returns and allowances and purchases. These are new in that we just picked them up a couple of chapters ago. So, so far, the only thing that, it, that makes you think a little bit is that adjusting entry for the merchandise inventory. You gotta zero out the old, put in the new. Out with the old, in with the new. Now let's look at our worksheet. The worksheet is gonna have these columns, huh? It's gonna have the trial balance. It will be a preliminary trial balance. It will be an unadjusted trial balance. So the first two columns are the trial balance uh, before we do anything. The next two columns are gonna be the adjustments. And then we're gonna take that first pair of columns, the trial balance, plus or minus debit or credit, the adjustments to come up with a new adjusted final blessed trial balance. That trial balance is what we need to prepare the income statement in the next two columns and the balance sheet in the next two columns. So let's take a look here. Go over some of these journal entries, it wouldn't hurt. You notice the first one, a physical count showed the merchandise inventory costing 45 sixes on hand, huh? Well, you notice they have two lines there, two letters, A and B, A and B. A is out with the old, B is in with the new, is the way I like to do it. So here we go, out with the old, A, credit the prior balance, you can see that at 52,000. <clears> and debit the um, income summary, 52. In with the new, 45,600. That's the number they gave us. Credit the income summary. Easy as that. 
Students get rattled by it though. They, they forget you have to take both pieces out individually. You can't just say the difference between the two inventories is this and adjust because then the worksheet will not do what it's supposed to do for you. Let's look at this worksheet, huh? Okay, here's a complete worksheet. Let's look at this. Certain things you know you're going to have to adjust every period. You know you're going to have to adjust the merchandise inventory, all the prepaid, the prepaid supplies, prepaid insurance. You know you're going to have depreciation expense, and you might have some unearned revenues. You're never going to adjust cash or accounts receivable or accounts payable. You know, we don't send people out into the vault to count the cash and then come back and say, we only have $25,000, so we'll adjust. No, it doesn't work like that. So let's make sure we're very comfortable using this schedule. It's not that tough. We had a balance in cash of 26 and 13 in receivables. There were no adjustments, so we just bring the numbers over. Look at your merchandise inventory. We had a balance of 52. We got rid of that and put up the 45.6. So 45.6 is our new balance. We're not using this, we're not teaching this account, but I'm just going to show you 1200 out, 1200 in, like the inventory. Let's see if there's anything else I like on this thing. Let me show you the whole thing. It can be pretty lengthy, huh? Notice they're giving you the steps. Step one is to get the trial balance. Step two, get the adjusting journal entries. And then step three, come up with the new trial balance. Journalizing the journal entries. Journalize, wow, I need, I need to make this bigger for my eyes. Where did that go, pray tell? There we go. Just, we're just peeking at the journal entries here, the ones that are important to us. Notice what they did with the inventory. Out with the old, you credit the merchandise inventory, debit the summary. Then you put in the new balance with a debit and credit the summary. We're not worried about sales returns or the estimated things. Take a look at your supplies expense. You're going to have to debit supplies expense and credit prepaid supplies. That should say prepaid supplies, but that's okay. Depreciation expense, that's the easy one you want on the test. It's always debited depreciation expense, credit to accumulated depreciation. Wages expense, credit wages payable. That's the $700, Hunter, you earned the last week of the month. And you went home the last week or the last day of the month, and they didn't pay you that 700 yet. You don't get paid till two more weeks, perhaps. But you worked those 700 hours in the current month, in that month, and that's where that expense goes with that accrual. And of course, the subscriptions here. Okay. So this chapter is something of a, a, a little bit of a review of some very early things we did. Now, what we're going to talk about are likely differences in the journal entries between periodic and perpetual. Periodic, you debit purchases, perpetual, you debit the merchandise inventory. So let's see what we have here. And I call your attention to this grid. This is quite important. If we were on, if you were in my classroom on campus, this would be a pretty good chunk on the test because I expect you to understand the difference in the journal entries. So let's take a look at this. Periodic, perpetual, periodic, periodic, periodic. We debit an expense, a cost, if you will, called purchases and credit AP. Here we debit the inventory directly. So if we had a thousand dollars in the inventory, under the perpetual system after this transaction, we know we now had 1800. We wouldn't know that under the periodic. Sold merchandise on account. On account of nobody had money. On account. Debit accounts receivable. 
credit sales. Could have been cash. It was cash that, that is not relevant here. Notice over here, it's the same entry for the sale. Both, both methods use the same sales journal entry. But like I said, they got to go to the extra step here. The cost of the merchandise was 300. They sold something for $400 for which they paid 300. Cost of goods sold means what you paid for the goods you sold. It's an expense. Debit cost of goods sold, credit the merchandise inventory. Now the company that started off with a thousand knows it went up to 1800. Now it went down by 300. They know every moment of the day. Customer returns. We return something, a purchase return. We return something to a, a, a vendor. We debit AP and credit purchase returns and allowances under the periodic. Here though, we don't use that purchase returns account. We're gonna put it right out of the merchandise inventory, which makes all the sense in the world because we're running all movements of inventory through the merchandise inventory. The next one I'm not worried about, not worried about that. Let's take a look at our year end adjustments. What we just looked at were the normal daily things. The only thing we're gonna look at on this screen right here is the first journal entry or pair getting the new inventory in. We're gonna debit income summary and we're gonna credit merchandise inventory. In with the new debit the inventory credit here. Under the other system, we only know what the exact inventory number is at the end of the year. And then we can just put the difference in. And we're not running that long income statement calculation of cost of goods sold. We're not worried about adjustments for expected sales returns. Inventory shrinkage we are though, boy, inventory shrinkage. Guess what? People steal inventory, huh? Your employees may damage inventory and try to hide that from you because they're worried to get yelled at or, or, or dismissed. So companies count their inventory and the inventory balance on the record say a million, but when you counted it, you only counted $995,000. You don't know what happened to that $5,000 and you probably never will, but you know you have to record it into cost of goods sold. And that's known as inventory shrinkage. Differences between physical count and the amount in the perpetual inventory require an adjusting entry. So take a look at it here. A physical inventory indicated we had $3,710 worth of merchandise. What the general ledger says we should have 3,840 the perpetual records, which equal the general ledger. Well, we're off by about 1% or, you know, off by about 3%, I guess, something like that. That difference is gonna be debited to an account you're gonna call inventory over short. We called it cost of goods sold dash shrinkage. Think of it that way. You're debiting cost of goods sold basically and crediting the inventory so that we now reflect the proper 3,710 bucks. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our presentation for today. So that wasn't too painful, was it? What do you think, uh, Hunter? You got any questions, comments? Uh, no, not really. I'll we'll probably end up uh, watching it again to take more in-depth notes, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. my boss will put it on Canvas this, this afternoon. It's on my YouTube channel as well. So yeah, and like I say, Hunter, catch up on any assignments you may be behind and uh, good things will happen, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, you take care. Yep, what, do you, what do you think, Rod? Um, I have to review it. There's a lot in there. Yeah, it's, it's really, I mean, I kind of clunked my way along here today, but it, yeah. it's, it's not too much. It's that um, uh, out with the old, in with the new stuff and using that long worksheet. Um, and we'll finish with that in the next chapter. Hard to believe the next chapter is the end of this course, right? Oh, no, 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 I'm in the wrong class. We got to go back to seven. 
And you better pay attention to cap chapters eight and nine. You know that, right? Yeah. Payroll. <laughs> you probably you should know more about that with uh, your tax work. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so that'll be easy. <laughs> what's that? That'll be the easy part. Yeah, I, I hope so. It should be easy for everybody, really. I, I mean, everybody knows what payroll is about. So anyway, I sent you my uh, W-2. Um, yeah, I can't open it. Oh, um, really? The, let me see. The um, W-2 under Google Mail, it says there's an error through Gmail. Um, Social okay. Security is having an issue. Yeah, I can print one out right here. And then the Merrill Lynch, when I click it, it's just an account directly to your account and it wants your credentials. So what you'll have to do is download the PDFs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can go on my website. Remember I was saying, um, actually, maybe we'll stop recording so we can give you details. Okay, yeah, hold on here. We don't want everybody hearing this. Stop video. Go ahead, you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm here. Okay. Oh, no, you can record have video but you're recording still so it'll show up in the oh i did i hit the wrong button uh that's okay because i'm going to trim this before i i don't know if you know that i trim a lot of these videos oh so no I'll i haven't really list. watched any what's that um <laughs> no i haven't really watched gone back to watch them i just since i'm here it's like no if you're here i i would not want to sit through this two times but anyway yeah. So go ahead. We're talking confidentially. Go ahead. Okay. So you can go to the website. I'll send you a link. And then the website has a secure portal upload. Yeah. And you can just drop them in there. So say if you have a PDF of the W-2, just drop it in and then I'll get it through the secure portal. Can That'll we do easier. that now? Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, oh. I'm going to go into your website, right? Yeah. Uh, SPTaxTools.com. I just send you a link. I re replied to your email. You okay. have sptaxpros.com. To, to the pipeline? Yeah, to the pipeline email. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Um, you know, as of two years ago, I didn't really have an email. I mean, a really? website. Oh, wow. It was all word of mouth and I was really busy. Yeah. And then I moved offices. So a client said, hey, you need to get a website so people can um, um, find you. I'm like, all right. So I set up a there website. That's him. That's the guy. And um, man, this year, the whole thing blew up. Oh, the website did? Well, yeah. It's like Google found me. People have been finding me. If, if you Google SP Tax Pros, I have like 46 reviews from last year. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thought I saw quite a few. You know, when I was oh. hitting that number, I had no idea it was going to you directly. Well, it goes to my office line. So if I don't pick up the office. It also rings yeah. my cell phone, so I always pick up. Okay. Here we go. Tax pros. Someone beats you to 1040, though, huh, as the phone number? I wanted 1040, so I got 1041. I saw that. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm here now. What do I want to do? Document uploads, did you say? Or? Yeah, uh, so document uploads. It takes you to the secure server. You basically put your name email, and then you just drop them in under the browse yeah. button. If you have PDFs, you just upload them. Okay, so it's asking for my stuff. Okay, I should be able to do this, Rod. That's not gonna be a problem, I don't think. Yeah, so go to the Merrill Lynch, download a PDF of the 1099. Okay. Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Ziggy. Yeah, today's like the crunch day. I have like five S corp or C corps being picked up. You know, mine you could do at the very last minute. No, it's fine. I'll make it. They're um, done. I'm just having people picking up, and I've okay. left Tuesday, Thursdays open for my class and review. I have to do it on my cell phone. So hold well, on that's fine because if you do the cell phone, you can literally take a picture of the stuff. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, let me all right. I'm gonna, gonna go into your website on my cell phone. Okay. I can do it yeah, that way, right? You can just take a picture with a phone. All right. Here we are. There we go. 
And it's saying overview updates directions, I guess. Um, what was that? It says on my cell phone, the choices are um, overview, update services, reviews, a oh, website, I guess I want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Document uploads, huh? Yep. So far, so good. Now it wants my stuff. E okay, yeah, here name, I have the book. Okay. Name an email, basically, and then you can use your phone to take pictures of your documents. Okay. Yeah, actually, uh, this whole pandemic forced me to make changes.